Hello and welcome back. Today we are focusing on PLC tags, an essential part of programming your PLC. By the end of the video you will know exactly what they are and how to create them. Our main goal is still to write the program for our training system. In the previous video we created a project in the TI portal which forms the foundation for everything we will do in the upcoming chapters. The TI portal has already set up the organization block OB1 for us. This is where we can write our program. But before we can jump into programming, we still have two more tasks on our to-do list. First, we need to set up the PLC tags. These will help us link the program to our inputs and outputs. Next, we will choose the programming language that is best for our project. I don't want to waste your time, so let's get started with creating the PLC tags. Here is an example of a very simple PLC program. These elements are called PLC tags. They act as a bridge between the PLC program and the physical inputs and outputs of the controller. Let's take a closer look and explore this in more detail. A PLC tag consists of two addresses, an absolute address and a symbolic address. In the TA portal, absolute addresses are marked with a percentage sign. These addresses refer to a physical area, such as inputs, outputs or internal memory. In our case, the input has the absolute address 0.0. .0. To use a sensor or actuator in your PLC program, you will need to know its absolute address. But imagine working on a large PLC program with hundreds of absolute addresses. For us as humans, it's nearly impossible to remember which inputs and outputs are connected to specific sensors and actuators. For this reason, the TI portal uses symbolic addresses instead. Symbolic addresses are defined by the programmer. They are easy to read and should be simple and clear to understand. The symbolic address serves as a bridge between the PLC program and the absolute address, which directly references to the hardware. If you don't understand this yet, don't worry. It will all become clear when we start working in the TI portal. For now, our goal is to create a PLC tag for the sensor and the actuator in our training system. The green push button is wired to input I0.0. .0. For this reason, its absolute address is %I0.0. .0. For its symbolic address, I will use the easy name button. The lamp is wired to output Q0.0. .0. For this reason, its absolute address is percent %Q0.0. .0. For its symbolic address, I will use the easy name LAMP. Alright everyone, it's time to put what we've learned into action in the TA portal. Let's dive in and create our first PLC tags. Our main goal is to write the program for our training system in the organization block 1. But before we can start, we need to create PLC tags, which we will do in the PLC tags folder. You can create PLC tags by clicking on show all tags and enter them directly here. However, it's much more organized to create a new tag table for your PLC tags. This is especially helpful in larger projects, where things can quickly become messy without proper organization. I will now create a new tag table for our PLC tags, which is called Sensors and Actuators. As I explained earlier, every PLC tag needs an absolute address and a symbolic name. I will now enter the values into the right columns. The 
The TI portal automatically adds a percentage sign. So you only need to type in I0.0 .0 or Q0.0. .0. You can also expand the tag table by adding additional rows. Throughout this course, I will share more tips and tricks to save you time in TIA portal. To insert a row above or below a PLC tag, simply use these two symbols. You can also export the tag table or import tags, for example, from Microsoft Excel. All right, everyone. Here are the PLC tags for our training system. Digital sensors and actuators always use the bool data type. Data types determine how the TI portal interprets individual bits. We will explore more data types later in the course, but for now it's something you don't need to worry about. Please pay close attention now. This is an important tip for practical use. A good PLC program isn't just working, it should also be well documented. Other people might need to work with your program, so it's essential to add clear descriptive comments for every PLC tag. We have now created the two PLC tags for our training system. From now on, there is no need to work with the absolute addresses. Instead, we can use the easy to understand symbolic names directly in the PLC program. If we now switch back to the device view, we can see that the absolute addresses of our controller have been replaced with the symbolic names. Thank you so much for learning PLC programming with me. If you want to take your skills to the next level, visit my website. Join my full online course and start your journey as a PLC programmer. I would love to have you on board. At the end of the video, I want to share some important insights with you. Let's answer the question, what is a good name for my PLC tags? This is a topic that has been debated since PLCs were invented. Here are some examples of PLC tags for a start button. Let's go quickly through them one by one. We will begin with the first row. Some programmers use a component name from the electrical plan as a PLC tag. In my opinion, this isn't a good idea as names like S1 don't provide a clear and meaningful description. It makes the program hard to read and understand. The next PLC tag is better, but still not perfect. It is not clear if it represents a button, a switch or anything else. By the way, the TI portal doesn't differentiate between uppercase and lowercase letters. However, using uppercase letters can make tags more readable, as demonstrated in the next example. Please avoid using spaces in symbolic names. Instead, you can use camel case, where the first letter of a word is capitalized. This makes the name easier to read and understand. Another option is to use snake case, where spaces are replaced with underscores. I personally find this style clear and easy to read, which is why we'll be using it a lot in this course. Let's take a look at the last row. You will notice a letter before the name. This is called a prefix. Prefixes can give you additional information about the tag. For example, the data type or specify that the tag represents an input. For practice, you can name your PLC tags however you like. It's all about what works best for you. If you are working as a professional PLC programmer, you will need to communicate with your client and your company. If a naming standard already exists, stick to it. If not, create one and make sure it's properly documented. Alright everyone, I hope I didn't bore you too much in this video. Defining the right PLC tags is an important step. So now we can check that off our to-do list. In the next video, we will explore programming languages. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're excited to dive deeper into PLC programming, visit my website at plccoach.com. See you in the next video.